Hi guys, so this is a quick troubleshoot guide for anybody that has purchased an RCRF RGB-5 or an RCRF RGB-8. So both of those are our multi-channel receivers and they work with either a remote control or a wall controller or a multi-zone controller or a Wi-Fi kit and they can all be paired back to one receiver. All of the controllers and remotes and wall controllers all work in the same way. So they all have the same kind of system, the same kind of programs, but in a different kind of either a wall controller or a remote. So first of all, if you have your power supply going to the receiver to the LED strip, you must make sure that the black cable is in one of the pluses. So you have plus minus for R, so R plus minus, G plus minus, B plus minus, and W plus minus. Well, out of your LED strip, if you have RGBW or RGB, black is always the plus. So black is all will go into any one of those pluses. We always say let's just put it into the R plus. So black will go into R plus, and then all of the colours will go into the minuses. So black to R plus, and then you will put the red to R minus, green to G minus blue to B minus, and if you have the RGBW, you put the white to W minus. When your power supply is connected up, then it should go into this setting of all channels on, which is a kind of a, like a white, a bluey white. At that point, you would know the power supply is working, the LED strip is working, and the receiver is working so far. If this is not lighting up at all, or you're getting just a small red glow, then your power supply is the wrong voltage. If the power supply should be 24 volts because the tape is 24 volts, if the power supply is only lighting up a small red light, then the power supply is 12 volt and it is the wrong power supply. If the light's flashing on and off, on and off, then your power supply is overloaded. So you have put too much strip, too much wattage strip onto the power supply. Whereas if you get to this point and you're thinking, right, why is it not connected to the controller? Well, let's answer that question now. So to pair, all of these need to be paired. So to be paired with this controller, then you would turn on the light here, you hit the big red button, the red light will go on there, the controller is on. You then click the learn key once, you then hit the zone you like to control, so let's hit number one, you then select the colours. So that is now paired to zone one. To complete, so I'll talk through that again. You would always make sure your controller's on. If you've got a wall controller, like a CT wall one or a CT wall four, make sure the wall controller is on the blue light. So that on the wall controller, you press it, so red light is, is off, press it again to blue light is on. So on the wall controller, you make sure your, your light is on, the blue light's on. On here, you make sure the red light is on, you click the learn button, you click the zone, for example, one, and then you select the color, and that receiver will be paired to zone one. You can then repeat that with multiple receivers. So you can pair multiple receivers to zone one, and away you go. If you've got a CT wall one, which doesn't have um, multiple zones, there is no need to press number one. You can just click the learn button, and then just select the color, and it will pair to there. You have the CT wall four, which has four zones. You can click the learn button, you can hit the number EG2, and click the learn button there. If it is not working in any way, you can hit reset. So with the RCRF RGB 8, this button is actually under the cap here. So, and with the RGB RCRF RGB 8, the, the black is still the plus, but I believe there is a V plus and then there's a RGBW uh, minuses. So it's slightly different to this, but black goes to the plus and then the colours match up to the RGBW. You can hold this learn button down for around 10 seconds and you will see this flash and go back to the original white state. There you go, the bluey white state means it is completely reset. That is reset, so no longer and um, paired to zone one. I've clicked number one now and it's not paired. So I'll repair this to zone one and show you what also can happen. So you click the learn button, you make sure the remote is on, you will click the learn button once, you click button one, and you will pair that to zone one. So here we go, that is all controlled. 
if you hit the on button, and this is the same with the wall controllers, you hit the main on button, you will turn this receiver off and all of the receivers off connected, whether they're on zone one, two, three, all the way up to eight. Hit the main button on, main button off, will turn all of those zones on and all of those zones off. What may happen is you want to turn off just zone one, or you may accidentally have turned off zone one. And you may have done that by holding just the one down for three seconds. Zone one is now off. So if you turn the big red button on and off, on and off, that light will never come back on until you hold down zone one for three seconds and it will pop on. So that could happen accidentally. The same with the wall controller. Someone may have held down zone one for too long, then be turning on and off, on and off, and that will never come back on. That is a major fault finding that you would can resolve the issue. It's be sure to hold the zones down to check that you've just not turned that zone off. So there is a couple of troubleshoot tips using the controller and the wall controller. They're all exactly the same um, in terms of the way they work. Well, one final point as well, the RGBW buttons they add 100% and take away 100% of that colour. So for example, let's hit button one and see what we have here. So let's see if I can get it to a really good, easy state to show you. Right, so red. Oh, let's see here, here we go. So this is, ah, here we go, this is a good fault finder. So this has been wired up incorrectly so that we can work this out correctly. To do a test, to test that these are wired up correctly, is there's an RGBW at the top, and these add 100% of that color and then take away 100% of that color. So if I click the red, this should be red. And in this case, it is green. So I'll press the red again, off. Now let's press the green. The green, we've got red. Press it again, off. Blue, we've got blue, and off. White, we've got white, which is correct. So the white is correct, the blue is correct, the green, I've got red, and the red, I've got green. So those cables are mixed up. So at that point, you would then go to here and switch the red and green over. So that is the great way to test but by adding them, they are adding 100% of that colour, taking it away to really see if they're wired into the correct portals on here. One thing that you may notice with that is as well, is by pressing these colours, you're adding 100% of that colour. So in this case, let's go with, um, I'm adding the green here, and then I'm pressing the next button, and it's turning that to an orange, and then I'm adding the blue, and it's sent it to a white, and then I'm adding a white, and it's going even more white. That is because you, you can add 100% of each color. So then if I press each color one by one, you will go back to the original state. So sometimes when you've pressed the blue, and then you've added another color, it is adding them together. So in some cases, someone will press red, and then they'll press green, expecting green, but you've actually added red and green, so you'll get an orange. So that is a great way of testing each product. You're adding 100% on, 100% off. That is great for mixing colors. Adding them all on gives you 20 watts of a white um, as well. So that is a great option across there, and that works on the wall controllers and the remote controls. So thank you for watching, comment away, any comments we can answer and ask, answer any questions. If you have one of these and are struggling to wire this up in any way, please give us a call. Check out insileled.co.uk.